At this year's Jamfesta convention, Oda revealed in an interview that a massive battle royale war will take place in the world of One Piece, and that some main characters will actually die in this war over the coming year. And said conflict is one we are seeing that already play out under our eyes right now, with several factions coming into conflict, including Law and Gar vs Blackbeard, and now even Kid vs Shanks in the country of Albath. However, you've likely struggled to keep track of how many road poneglyphs every faction has, which will prove critical in who will be able to reach the One Piece first, so allow me to remind you of everyone's current standing right now. Specifically, in his Jump Festa message, Oda stated, Regarding the One Piece source material in 2023, it'll be a type of story that will have you going, No way! That person and that person are gonna be fighting? If I were to give it a descriptive title, I'd call it a great battle royale. I hope no one dies. So essentially what Oda is saying here is that One Piece in 2023 is gonna have us going no way, that person and that person are gonna be fighting a lot. Which to be fair is already happening right now, I mean that's probably how you felt this week reading the last chapter, as I'm sure not that many people expected this matchup right now. Given the way it's worded in Japanese, this message comes off more like Oda is saying that we are going to have this reaction several times this year, like we did with God vs Blackbeard or Kid vs Shanks, rather than referring to one one single specific conflict like some people thought. After all, he described this situation as a battle royale, which is a conflict where several different groups are all fighting each other at the same time in separate places. We have both the Yonko and the worst generation struggling to attain all of the road poneglyphs. And since Morgan said that he believed that one of the members of the worst generation will be the one to attain the One Piece, then this means that either Law, Kid or Blackbeard may gain a major lag if they are able to win any of these battles. So let's take a quick look at what each current situation is with all the important members of each faction and how many road poneglyphs each of them have. So for starters, Luffy, Law and Kid left one with three different destinations the Lockbows led to. Luffy lost all bets and was forced to head southeast, though perhaps there may have been a twist of fate as that led him to Egghead where he met Vegapunk. Now stuck in the struggle to escape the Labo face alongside the punks, one of them being a traitor, Bonnie, Luchi and Kaku, with Admiral Kizaru, Gorosei, J. Garcia Saturn, and 100 marine ships heading for Egghead. It should be noted that it's specified that these 100 ships are of different sizes, so they're not all battleships like the ones you'd use in a Buster Call, but regardless, this is a very mighty force, one unlike we've never seen before, especially including an Admiral and the unprecedented movement of one of the Gorosei. All likely because the Gorosei now see Luffy having transformed as Nika as just too much of a threat, even far bigger than the other ones happening in the world right now. As you will likely well know, the Straw Hats currently have three road poneglyphs, the one from Zo, the one from Hulkic Island, and the one from Wano, now only lacking the final one, originally found on Fishman Island, whose current location is unknown. Robin has also read at least 10 confirmed normal blue poneglyphs out of the total 26 that exist, though it's possible she may have read others off-screen during her younger years. Among these, it's implied she has read some of the nine Rio Poneglyphs that tell the history of the Void Century if read in order up until the final one found on Laugh Tale. Meanwhile, Law sailed the northeast towards Winner Island, where he was confronted by Blackbeard, who specifically ambushed him expecting one of the three supernova to come at one of the three locations. In this conflict, we on one hand have the Hard Pirates, who have attained the Road Poneglyph on Wano, and implicitly the one on Zo as well. It's possible that Straw Hats have probably given him a copy of the Road Poneglyph on Hulkic Island, but that hasn't really been confirmed yet, so we don't know for sure. On the other hand, the Blackbeard pirates don't have any confirmed rope poneglyphs under their belt, though Law believed that Blackbeard would likely have one as well. It's possible that they may have gotten the one on Holkic Island during their incursion there, as it seems like it'd be a waste to not have attempted to do so, but we don't really know yet. However, Blackbeard holds one of the most important keys towards finding the One Piece, and that's actually Charlotte Pudding, whom he has kidnapped. As it was inferred, the three eyed tribe seem to have the power to hear the voice of all things through their third eye, which people like Roger use to quite literally hear what the Poneglyphs said. Since Pudding is a half-blood three-eyed, she mentioned that she still hasn't awakened this power yet, but it's likely it could happen soon, giving Blackbeard a big edge in attaining the One Piece. 
It's hard to say exactly who would win between Law or Blackbeard because in all honesty, I'm not really a power scaler, but I would want to bring emphasis to the fact that the last panel we saw of their fight showed Blackbeard using Kurouzu or his Blackwater Vortex technique, which negates Dalford powers, so for someone like Law who is so reliant on his Dalford powers, that makes his chances of succeeding very poor. We should also remember that some weeks ago, Blackbeard invaded Amazon Lily, though he was forced to retreat. Hancock now finds herself forced to leave Amazon Lily, as she feels her people will be put in danger if she stays on the island. She wants to elope with Luffy, though we don't really know yet if she'll go after him or if she'll go somewhere else. Meanwhile, Kobe was kidnapped by Blackbeard and is now supposedly held hostage in Hachinosu. This is particularly fitting, because if Blackbeard managed to kidnap Law as well, then that would mean that together with Kobe, the three central figures of the Rocky incident will be in one place at the same time again. Furthermore, Kobe's kidnapping mobilized Garb to go rescue him at Kachinosu, picking Helmeppo and Hibari along the way at G14, despite not having been given clearance to engage against the Yonko, which will most likely lead to a confrontation between the two very soon. And Garb is actually Blackbeard's natural enemy, since being one of the most powerful non-devil fruit fighters in the world right now makes him a foil to Blackbeard's reliance on his powers. And finally, Kid managed to go east as he had wanted, which led him to the island of Warland Elbeth. As a quick side note, since we do see it in action right here, Elbeth appears to have a colossal tree in this chapter, which is likely themed around the Yggdrasil, the famous gigantic tree of Norse culture. Some people have speculated this tree could perhaps be related to the famous treasure tree Adam we've heard so much about, but we'll have to see. And one last thing, let's not forget the weird cylindrical shape that could be seen in the skies, which in this chapter, we actually see several of them surrounding the tree. What are they, actually? Regardless, on Albav we have Shanks, who seems to have stopped over to chat with some old friends, who are revealed to be Dory and Broggy, our old friends from Little Garden, who have finally made it home. It's particularly interesting since a cover story showed that even at the start of the post timescape, they were still dueling at Little Garden, so I wonder what happened to them to have decided to stop fighting and head back to the New World. Did it perhaps have to do with the news of the Straw Hat Pirates making it into the New World like we saw in the cover story? Either way, Shanks is happy to meet again with Dory and Broggy, claiming to be their old friends, with the two giants even calling Shanks brother. This means that Shanks likely befriended the two, much like Luffy did at Little Garden, since after all, they've been fighting each other for a hundred years, so it would have been impossible for Shanks to meet them anywhere else. With them, we also see Oimo and Kashi, the two giant guards from Enya's Lobby Gate, who are searching for Dory and Broggy, and were said to have returned to Albaf during their cover story as well. A lot of people were predicting that Shanks would have ties to Albaf, given how his ship resembles a Viking Drakkar, so it seems like that really ended up panning out, being beloved by the people of the island. As Ode explained in the SBS, very similarly to Whitebeard, Shanks had several allied crews under his wing, which we see some of them in this chapter hugging Shanks out of admiration for him. Though Ode explained there's a lot of mutual respect among them rather than subordination, much like the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. This is why Shanks' fleet refers to him by the title of Big Boss. The themed ships we can see around the island also seem to be those of said subordinate crews. Furthermore, Shanks is now being assisted by the giant warrior pirates, who Big Mom claimed to be so strong that Elbaf's military might would have been enough to give her the edge to attain the One Piece, so I'm not exactly fancying Kid's chances here. In fact, a killer makes it clear that Kid may very well die, which is fitting as Oda did tease the fact that he hopes no one dies in this great battle royale. Shanks is now getting serious about going after the One Piece, so he asks Kid to hand over his rubbings in exchange for survival. Kid currently has Wano's road panaglyph, who Law gave to him as thanks for the Big Mom together, and also the Whole Kick Island road panaglyph, which many overlook, but Kid was able to take when he infiltrated Tut Land during the time skip, being the item he had wanted to take from the territory he talked about in Wano. During that time, Kid also fought against the Red Hair Pirates, though he wasn't even able to meet Shanks and instead lost his arm to one of his men, which this chapter implies was actually Ben Beckman. 
Island. It's unknown, however, whether Law gave Hid the Zoro Road Poneglyph as well. As for Shanks, we don't really know he has any Road Poneglyphs, as he should know the location of all of them, but he couldn't have gone into Wano or Hokkik Island. And Pedro claimed the Roger Pirates were the only other ones who were shown the Road Poneglyph on Zoe, aside from the Straw Hats and Law. However, that makes me wonder if there is a Road Poneglyph in Elbath, which is a fairly logical conclusion to make, but I think that now we can actually motivate that, because we saw how Sol rescued all the books of Ahara after the incident, so what if he actually did the same at Fisherman Island and felt that it was too dangerous for the Poneglyph to be found in such an open area where so many pirates pass by, especially now during the Great Pirate Era. So instead took it to Elbaf with him, a much safer fortress no normal pirate can penetrate, as he expected that Robin would one day want to meet him again so that he could hand the Poneglyph to her personally. This is why Sol may have come to be known as the Far Scar, the man who bears the final road Poneglyph. That would make sense, since only giants of his size could take away a Poneglyph with such ease. So perhaps Shanks already has access to this Poneglyph due to his connection with the giants, but we can't really say for sure. But still, these are not all the factions involved in this conflict, as there are plenty of other relevant characters making their move across the world. Of course, we have Morgans on his flying ship, who is keeping safe Wapple and Vivi, who seem to have attained some forbidden knowledge from the government that may relate to Cobra's death and maybe even King Emu. Meanwhile, Dragon and the revolutionaries are making their final preparations to begin their grand revolution, though Sabo is presumably still missing after that certain incident in the country that never existed. Kuma as well, of course, is climbing up the red line towards Marie Joie. Jerma is escaping Topland alongside Caesar, Buggy, Mihawk and Crocodile have founded Cross Guild, and Miss Bucking is splitting Marco to help rescue Weevil from Admiral Ryokugyu. And what about the Straw Hat Grand Fleet? Apu, Urush, Enel, and of course the lurking legend Imusama. Lots of factions are making their move in this grand battle royale that will engulf the One Piece world. What we are seeing right now are the embers, the sparks that will explode into the final conflict that will be the climax of One Piece.